Well, hello. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I am making a chicken parmesan, and I'm making it for my bonus son, Brad. It is his birthday tomorrow, so my husband and I are going to head on over to his house later and deliver the chicken parmesan along with a red velvet cake I made for him last night. He's going to love it. That is his favorite. Now, Brad loves a casserole. If I were to hand him a homemade casserole or a $100 bill, he would take the food every single time. He's a single guy and he enjoys a home cooked meal when he can get it. Now, I'm starting off with some orzo pasta. This is orzo. It looks a little bit like rice and it is delicious. And I cooked it according to the package directions. I drained it and I'm putting it in the bottom of this pan. That way, Brad doesn't have to make anything to go on the side. It's a one dish wonder. And the orzo picks up all the juice and the flavor of the chicken and also the sauce that I'm gonna put on. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna show you how easy this chicken parmesan is. It's one of my favorite things to make and carry to someone's house. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna start with are two Ziploc baggies. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love Ziploc baggies. That way, I don't have any dishes at the end. I can save whatever I have left if I choose to and put it in the freezer or I can discard it. And I'm just gonna crack these eggs and put them right into my baggie. Two. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna take just a pinch of salt. Not much, but I wanna add a little bit of flavor to these eggs, so a little pinch is perfect. And I'm not even going to bother to put the eggs in a dish and scramble them. I'm going to do it just like this. <laughs> why not? Really? You know, why dirty a dish if you don't have to? Listen, my life is so crazy busy right now. We have lots of family coming in this time of the year for visits. We've got some friends coming in from Houston. My grandsons are coming in next week. It is just a really busy time, but it's a good time. So anything that I can do that saves time for me is definitely worth doing. Now, I have chicken tenderloins here. I'm not going to pound these where they're thin because I think the tenderloin is perfect. It cooks up beautifully. See that? And two or three makes a wonderful serving and they cook a lot faster than a whole chicken breast would. A whole lot faster. And again, like I said, I'm crazy busy right now. So anything that I can do to make my life a little bit easier, I am going to do. And by the way, did y'all see we got a puppy? Talk about busy. Little Honey, she is our new addition to the family, a little miniature schnauzer. She's sleeping right now, but I'll introduce you to her later, so stay tuned. All right, now I'm gonna close this baggie. And what I'm gonna do is just make sure that this tenderloin these chicken tenderloins are covered. Just mash it all around in there. Make sure that that egg gets all over them. The egg is going to help our breadcrumbs stick. So this is an important step. You don't want to skip it. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to set this aside right there, and I'm going to put my pasta over here, and I am going to turn a non-stick skillet. I've got a really wide non-stick skillet here. It's important to use a non-stick because you don't want to lose any 
of the delicious breading that we're going to put on this chicken. And I'm going to heat this to a good medium, and I'll probably boost it up to a medium high once I get my butter and oil in. Okay, now I've got this. Now let's start on the delicious breading. I love panko breadcrumbs. I use them in almost everything that calls for breadcrumbs because they're just so good. They're light and they're crispy and they're airy and they're always delicious. Now they also make a Italian style panko breadcrumb and I'm not going to use that and the reason why is because it's got a large salt content and I really want to watch my salt in this recipe because I'm going to add the spaghetti sauce and it's got a lot of salt in it so I don't want to over salt this dish and I am going to use about two cups of breadcrumbs I'm putting it right into my Ziploc baggie. As a matter of fact, let me measure out right over this. That looks good. Now, this may be a little bit more than I need. And if it is, I roll the baggie up and I put it in the freezer. And I use it the next time for my husband and I. Now, this stuff <laughs> is great. Don't turn your nose up at the Parmesan cheese here. I love to use the, this is the shaved Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna use this on the top as a garnish, but for the breading, I love what this does. It holds up really well to cooking and doesn't melt and make a mess all in your frying pan. So I'm going to add a whole cup to this. Now this is another reason I'm not using the seasoned breadcrumbs because if I add the Parmesan cheese to that, it's going to be really, really salty. That is about a cup and I'm going to pour that right in. And I've also got some Italian seasoning and I'm going to take, see here, I'd say that was a teaspoon. Let's go with two teaspoons. This is just an Italian season mixture. Now I've got my salt and I am going to put a nice hefty pinch in there. Maybe even two because the panko breadcrumbs have zero salt in them. And I want this to have a nice good flavor. I'm going to take this and make sure it's all mixed up. Get my air out. I've got some lumps in here with that Parmesan cheese. So, I'm going to make sure that I get all those lumps out. This looks good to me. And I'm going to taste it because if it does need a little bit more salt, I wanna make sure I add it on this end because once you've cooked it, it's really hard to get that flavor right. Hmm, perfect. I love it when it happens on the first time. Okay, now, got my two Ziploc baggies here. Get my handy tongs back over here. And I am going to start adding my chicken. I do two at a time because if I do more than that, if I add more than two tenderloins at a time, then there's a good chance that they're going to stick together and they're not going to get fully coated. And we wouldn't want that. Now, I'm going to check. And I'm going to keep doing this until all of these tenderloins are perfectly coated. Brad's going to love this. You know, I can't say enough about my bonus children. 
I am so blessed, and my husband is blessed as well, because my grandchildren absolutely adore him. And his children have been so good to me and have welcomed me with open arms. And I am so thankful for that. And Brad, he's just one of a kind. He's that guy that you can call on that will always show up. Rain or shine, no matter what. Believe me, his father and I have called him many a time to get us out of some messes. I'm gonna break my rule and I'm gonna add three right there. And I've got some egg left over. You know what? In hindsight, I think that I could have gotten away with one egg, but I'd rather have more than I need than not enough. And my last shake. I'm gonna get some of the air out. And the very last thing that I'm gonna do is press on this very gently and make sure that those breadcrumbs stick. That looks great. Now, my pan is heating up and I've got some olive oil. And I'm gonna take my olive oil and spread it all over the bottom. And I'm also going to take some butter. Make sure that you use butter in this. You can even use butter to do all of it. You don't have to use the olive oil if you choose not to. But the butter is going to give it flavor and it's going to give it that beautiful brown color that we wanna see. So I've got about two tablespoons and I'm gonna keep my butter close because if I need to add more, I can do that. Turn my heat down just a little bit because I don't want my butter to burn. And let's get started on making these. Mmm, look at that butter. Perfect. Now these are gonna cook up in a flash. One of the reasons why I love the chicken tenderloins is because they cook so fast and they're moist and delicious. I'm gonna lay these out on the pan. See how that, those bright crumbs have stuck to this. Turn my heat up just a little bit. I've got it to a medium high now because as I add the chicken to my saute pan here, it is gonna start cooling down immediately. You know what, I might be able to get this whole batch in one pan, wouldn't that be good? Last one, voila. And I have got a good bit of this left over. And you know what, it's going into the freezer. My husband loves chicken parmesan and so do I. And on work nights, when I don't have a lot of time, I can pull this out of the freezer. It's already made. All I have to do is get my, my chicken tenderloins and my egg. And boom, I am done. Let me tell you a little bit more about Brad. He is, like I said, that guy that you definitely want to know. He is such a great friend. He's a great son, a great brother, a great grandson, a great nephew. Again, I just can't say enough about him. He can fix anything. He actually works at Fort Rucker, and that is an Army Aviation Military Center. And what they do there is they teach people how to fly helicopters. So if you are in the Army Aviation, you will have to come to Fort Rucker to learn how to fly a helicopter. Brad's grandfather was a helicopter instructor. 
and Brad has always been fascinated with them. And so he decided to go to a &P school, and now he is on the launch team for the Chinook. And the Chinook is the helicopter that has the double thingamajigs on it. I don't know what they're called, but they're the double blades, and it's huge. And I know when I'm in Dothan, and I'm driving around or I look up in the sky and I see the Chinook, I know without a doubt, Brad has helped to launch that. So that's pretty cool. He is a really smart, smart guy. Okay, these are browning really well. Look at that. It's exactly what I wanted to see. And just gonna turn these over. They take maybe two to three minutes on each side. They cook up super fast. My husband and I had taken a trip to Ocala, which is about four and a half hours from here. It's in Florida, Central Florida. And we were there visiting family and on the way home on a Sunday afternoon, at the start of COVID, we broke down. Our car broke a fan belt, and there was no one on a Sunday afternoon that could work on it. Well, what was the first thing that we did? We called Brad, and Brad came and was our knight in shining armor. He got his truck and got a trailer and came, I don't know, I think it was about four hours away and picked us up and brought us and our car home so we could get it worked on. I just don't know what we could do without it. Not to mention, it's so much fun to be around. Okay, these are just about done. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more butter right in the middle there. Just kind of bring this all around. One can never have enough butter, right? That way it doesn't get too dry. Mm, this smells so good. You know what? I'm going to take this one and it looks like it got left out of the butter a little bit, so I'm going to make sure it gets plenty. Put that right in the middle. Okay, I'm going to turn my heat off because these are just about done. Look how that one browned up. This one I know is done, and I'm going to add them straight to my pan. I don't want any of the juice to go to waste. Sometimes I will make these and not put any sauce on them, and they're crispy and delicious, and they heat up so well. Mm. These look amazing. There's nothing that Brad likes better then to get a dish like this on the weekend, which it's Friday, and be able to eat on this all weekend and through the week. Look at that. That looks so good. I'm gonna take whatever juice is there. head back over and I'll show you how to finish this up. Okay, this is ready to go ahead and top with the sauce. Now I'm using a jarred spaghetti sauce. I happen to love this. This is the Classico Four Cheese. To me, it has the, ooh, come on now, best flavor. It is so, so good and I use it all the time. Now, I'm gonna spoon this right over the top of this. Make sure 
that I get all that yummy goodness out. Yum! Look at that. Oh, this is going to make our guy so, so happy. Hmm, my mouth is kind of watering. It's getting close to lunch. But I'm going to make sure all of this gets to Brad. And we're not going to eat any. Okay, it's as simple as that. Now, I am using this mozzarella and provolone mixture. I love this. I use it on pizzas. I use it in lasagna. It is so good. And I am going to cover the top of this with cheese. And when I give it to Brad, all he has to do is he can either spoon it out and put it in the microwave, or he can take this entire dish and put it in the oven just long enough to warm it through and let the cheese melt. You know what? Let's just do it like that. Spread it all out here. Mm. And I've got the shaved Parmesan. I love this stuff. It's so good. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over the top. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to do a little bit more of my Italian seasoning right over the top. And I've got some fresh basil here. I'm not sure if Brad likes fresh basil or not. That's one of the disadvantages of not cooking for him when he was growing up. But I'm just gonna go easy on it, do a chiffonade on these. Mm. Fresh basil. I just put this right over the top. Like I said, not much. Just adds a little pop of freshness and a little bit of color. Look at that. Does it get any better than that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm done. Yes, it was that easy. I know that this took less than 10 minutes to make start to finish. Well, that's not including the orzo. It took me a, a few minutes to boil that, but it goes really, really fast. And look, we've got a delicious meal. I am going to pack this up along with his birthday cake. I made him a little personalized red velvet cake, which I know he loves. And hey, you're never too old to be the birthday boy. So I am so glad that you joined me today. Oh, I almost forgot. Honey. I'll be right back. Can you say hello to all the people? She was taking her nap. So I have, oh, big yawn, big, big yawn. So I was, woke her up. She is wonderful. She is the perfect addition to our family. We are enjoying her so, so much. Oh, you smell that on my fingers, huh? I hope that you have a fabulous, fabulous day. And you are a blessing to me. If you like my videos, please press that like button. Feel free to share them with your friends. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your messages to me and all the kind words that you have given me. Blessings to you. And I have a feeling that this one is probably ready to go out. Y'all have a great day. And it says bye. Bye.